hello everyone uh, thank you for coming to the last talk of open source summit japan and i'm a little nervous because it's my first time but i hope you forgive me if i started a little or miss a few points here and there so let me introduce you uh, let me introduce myself i am rishita i am a student from india i love open source i love traveling i love coding and of course i write few blogs so yeah i love content too so today i'm going to talk about uh, role of uh, FIDO2 in safety critical applications. So as we all know that open source components are widely used in safety critical op applications and recently FIDO2 has been adopted a lot, has been adopted a lot. So some of the places where in open source we can see uh, which has adopted FIDO2 is Department of Defense in USA, uh, European Union Agency of Cybersecurity and in recent times uh, the Linux Foundation is trying to integrate uh, FIDO2 into the Linux uh, kernel. So why FIDO2 in, you know, in safety critical applications? First of all, it's open source. So the maturity and reliability is there. There's a large group of people who are working continuously to develop the product and make it even better. The cost, of course, you know, it's free and that's the whole point of open source and transparency. So when a company is going to choose a product, a software, so they can see the lines of codes which, uh, which is used to build the software essentially. So transparency is there as well. But the main problem is there, data breaches. These are some of the data I picked out which shows that about 57% of organizations have suffered uh, phishing attacks and there has been around a 238% increase in cyber attacks, especially in financial services and uh, roughly around $18.5 million uh, is the average cost for each cyber attacks. And the most concerning part was 42% of the breaches uh, occur because of user password compromises. So of course, there's a password problem. So one-time passes were, uh, pass codes were introduced, but they weren't very convenient <coughs> because you know SMS reliability uh, you log into your application, then a OTP comes to your uh, phone, then you have to uh, put the OTP code in your uh, website again. So it's uh, really inconvenient, and plus uh, token necklaces are quite expensive. At the end of the day, the user confu uh, confusion is there. And after all of this, it's still fishable. So we need a better solution. We need, need, a, need a better model, essentially. That better model is uh, Fast Identity Online, or FIDO. So FIDO Alliance is a family of protocols. They have different kind of protocols which uh, essentially help you to eliminate password. It can be UAF or U2F or FIDO2. So in this talk, I'll focus mostly on FIDO2 and the uh, website browser applications of it. So in the old paradigm, if you wanted uh, your application to be more secure, it would have been a little expensive. And if it's affordable, it is not that secure. So FIDO2 actually eliminates this and using open standards for st simpler, stronger authentication using public key cryptography, you can have uh, easier uh, access, plus the, usa uh, the usability is easy, plus the security is very strong. So let's understand how it works. So the web server or the relying party uh, essentially sends the credential IDs and origin information to the client, which is basically a web browser or the website or basically the browser uh, that is a client. The client says the uh, tells the authenticator, okay, uh, this is the challenge, this is the information I've got from the relying party. Now check if the user is there or not. Essentially user verification. So it can happen uh, variously. Currently, biometrics or uh, these external security keys or passcodes, uh, these basically are used for user verification. So suppose uh, the authenticator is a, a security key one. So the user has to enter the security key. As a result, uh, the user has been verified. Now once the user is verified, this authenticator has a private key inside of it, which then uh, signs the response and sends, uh, sends it back to the client. The client uh, takes the signed response and combines with the previous payload it got from the relying party and then sends this back to the server. Now, if there's any anomalies or any s adversities happening in the middle, uh, the server doesn't allow the user to access it. Basically, uh, if there's anything wrong in the entire process, any suspect, uh, suspicions in the entire process, the relying party won't accept it. So. 
in summary it re reduces the complex password because on the user end you just have to tap something or do a gesture or do anything and you can sign in that's why it's the single gesture to log on uh, it works commonly uh, mostly on all the devices like uh, recently uh, uh, Microsoft has adopted it Google has adopted it you have used it also uh, when you log out of your Gmail account on your laptop and you if you want to re-log in so basically Google tells you that hey click the number 34 on your phone so you click on it and then you're logged in on your laptop so that's basically uh, example of it uh, another would be same uh, authentication on multiple devices so if you have a security key you can use that same security key to log in uh, to get access to your multiple devices and most importantly it's fast and convenient so the question arises how does it help safety critical applications so it mitigates the risk and enhances security so some of the uh, main types of risk are phishing attacks uh, uh, so phishing attacks, as you all know, how it happens, you know, someone is pretending to be you. So because this, uh, uh, because this cryptographic trees are unique for each website, it's very difficult to replicate uh, or intercept, you know, uh, sorry, <laughs> making it extremely difficult for attackers to replicate or intercept during the phishing attacks. And strong protocols are also there. So uh, RSA, AES-128, AES-256, these or SHA-256, uh, these kind of strong cryptographic systems are used. So um, it's very difficult, very, very, very difficult to break into the system. Also, it supports MFA, multi-factor uh, authentication, uh, like biometric keys or, uh, sorry, security keys or biometric authentication. These are some of the things. And also a very amazing thing is device attestation or device-based authentication. So you can use your smartphone because it has a TPM inside of it to uh, register yourself or attest yourself to the uh, platform and then you can log into the service or the application again and again. Now, uh, in the new generation, uh, website, you know, everyone uses web. So Fido2 along with WebAuthn has, you know, uh, has been really adopted and it also supports cross-platform. So the basic architecture would be something as I previously explained, an authentication request comes, uh, public keys, uh, which is basically the credential IDs, are uh, you know, uh, downloaded from the storage systems or the databases, which is used to generate a challenge, and the challenge is sent to the client, that is the laptop here. And uh, when the challenge has been fulfilled using, suppose the Fido key right there, the key has been tapped, the ch user has been verified, so the challenge is signed then the, by the client and it's sent to the server to be verified. Once the challenge is verified, a return, uh, response has been returned. So to simplify the entire process, WebAuthn is uh, used for the challenge, uh, sending the challenge and signing up, uh, signing up the challenge. So these are basically JavaScript APIs. Uh, CBOR is one of the uh, examples of it. Uh, now, Let's understand how to uh, how it can be done better using a case study here. So this is one of my own projects. Uh, it has been accepted by the uh, International Journal of Critical Computer Based Systems. So it's basically a Fido2 compatible smart card uh, system for healthcare information storage. So what happens is when you want to log into your dashboard or your system. Uh, pop-up comes up where you have to enter your security key. So once I enter the security key, I get several options like register a temporary tag, register a new card, or register a device, or upload or download uh, the reports. So registering this device is basically device attestation, as I explained previously. And register a new card is suppose I want to ac have access to this device, but suppose in future I have some kind of medical emergency. So I take a NFC card and uh, I register it to my dashboard, and in future I can just access my dashboard using that NFC card. And registering temporary tags is used for the hospital ends. So you can uh, register temporary NFC tags, it's very cheap. The, uh, it has a certain expiry date, so the hospitals can access this uh, your uh, dashboard using this. And something like this would come up on the hospital end where they don't have the admin access, so they do, can't delete or edit your previous information. All they can do is download your reports or upload your reports. Another 
application of it would be IOMT, which is Internet of Medical Things. That is, uh, medical devices like MRI machines and all those uh, devices can directly upload uh, the reports to the uh, system. As a result of it, uh, we are automating the entire process and making it more secure. So this would be something like the architecture. As I uh, said, this would be the server. And on the user end, uh, the user can access using NFC, BLE, or USB, or a medical card, or a temporary token, which can, which can be a web NFC or an NFC card. And using that, use, uh, they can perform Authn for Fido. And on the hospital end, they can just access using temporary tokens or web NFCs. And again, they can access your uh, previous data. So basically, it has three different ways of authenticating. One would be uh, logging in with Fido uh, specifications, uh, which I explained earlier was the cards, uh, the uh, security keys, and all those things. And the second, when this fails, suppose the user can't log in, uh, then they have that uh, one-time links. But the one-time links are special because uh, it contains the authentication token, which is UUID version 4, and the requester's IP address, all encrypted together and sent. And as I said, that hospital's uh, NFC tokens. So coming to the security aspects of it, it's extremely secure uh, because uh, AE AES-128, AES-256, uh, encryption RSA uh, crypto systems are used here. Along with that, uh, uh, it takes the client's IP address and uh, uh, issues token which are stored uh, in cookies. And these are also encrypted by AES-128 crypto systems. So as a result, we are preventing cookie uh, hijacking, which can, be also, uh, which can also prevent session hijacking in a way. And along with this, uh, when the requester's IP address does not matches, uh, the person who clicks this links, links IP address does not matches with the for dashboard's uh, IP address, a conflict is created, so the user can't log in. Uh, I hope I'm making clear. Like, uh, the person who is trying to access the dashboard, his IP address we have, and the person who's clicking this link, we have their IP address. So these are like two different locations in a way. So you can't basically access the account in a way. Yeah. So. We are achieving various security goals. Authentication, we have a primary authentication using Fido, and we have a secondary authentication uh, using the one-time links. We are also having session security, uh, auto log off uh, when the session keys expire, you log off of the system. It also prevent, uh, prevents session hijacking, uh, you know, the cookies one I told. Also, it maintains uh, uh, confidentiality and integrity as the files which are uploaded are uh, encrypted at rest, and also when they're uh, transferred over uh, the lines, SSL encryption is, has been performed. Also, we need to know that the server only accepts uh, HTTPS requests. So uh, when a HTTP request comes, it, has been uh, it is redirected to HTTPS. Uh, also, uh, network security is also maintained. Uh, the data has been, uh, the in internal APIs are secure in a way because it's all running on a virtual machine. So cloud security has been also been used. So we did a benchmarking to see uh, what is generally the time taken for such things, like such authentications. So the yellow uh, bar chart shows that the time taken for Fido authentication and the average is roughly around 500 milliseconds, whereas the time taken for the password-based authentication is around 1,100 milliseconds. So we are almost reducing the time taken for uh, Fido authentication by half, basically increasing our uh, convenience. So com coming to ensuring security, uh, Fido2 also provides uh, certifications based on different requirements of uh, a product or a company. So they, also, uh, they provide fun functional certifications, which are uh, uh, confirmation testing, interpolability testing, universal servers. And also, along with it, it uh, provides security certification levels, which are uh, basically how do you protect the private keys, third party laboratory verification, these are given. Also, it provides biometric certification programs, uh, you know, making it more secure, uh, empirically validate biometric throughout third parties. Now, coming to how do we uh, test it and harden it. So, one of the main uh, points is load testing. So to prevent uh, DOS attack protection, a load testing 
uh, has to be done and the virtual machine should be able to handle when large amount of loads are coming. Cookie hijacking is another very serious issue uh, which needs to provide it, uh, protect it against MITM. So uh, session could be, uh, sorry, when I, sorry, I'm really sorry. Okay, another would be malware. Uh, cloud should have an anti-malware service which scans the virtual machine to note if any malware has come into the system or not. Phishing is, as I mentioned previously, is one of the main critical problems that Fido2 solves. And uh, another would be man in the middle attack. Uh, when the DOS protection is kicked in, when high uh, high uh, request, high number of requests are coming in, and uh, the lower the load uh, and it lo lowers the load on the virtual machine, and keeping the service uh, running only for the legitimate users. As I said, DOS attack protection, SQL injection is again a very big problem. So. Uh, we have to protect against that also. Coming to the future scopes of FIDO2, uh, currently uh, the target of the FIDO2, uh, FIDO Alliance is to increase the adoption. Uh, last year in May, uh, it was noted that uh, Apple, Google, Microsoft, uh, all has been, uh, all have standardized uh, FIDO2 as the primary, uh, uh, as the as a standard for passwordless login. And also they're uh, working on mobile and IoT integration. Uh, their main focus right now is IoT integration only. Uh, so next is, these are some of the references uh, which can you know make you understand this topic even more. And thank you, and my talk was extremely short. I'm sorry for that. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, it seems to me you are from India, right? Right, yeah. And the, uh, my, my curiosity is that how Indian market adoption for the, those, you know, PASCII or FIDO Alliance, you know, authentication mechanism into smartphone, web service, internet services, yeah, yeah. just you mentioned the example of the uh, hospital, you know, access key or something yeah. like that. So what, what's the uh, adoption rate for the Indian market? Oh, right now, uh, Indian market is quite far behind it. Uh, Fido2 as adoption hasn't been that much. We have seen it in private companies, like Google uh, provides Fido2, but uh, on a holistic level, unless private companies adopt it, uh, I don't think that, uh, people are of course uh, ready for the adoption, but on the government end, uh, I haven't seen anything as of. I mean, uh, Aadhaar and other things are there for, a more uh, secure environment, but uh, FIDO2, uh, it's still like under adoption. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. So first of all, very nice talk, very clear, understandable. You did a great job presenting everything. Thank um, you. Can you go back eight yeah. slides, I think it is? Which one? Uh, uh, sorry, so to the slides where you have the timing differences. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So um, when people enter passwords, the time that it takes them to enter the password is the dominant cost in that. And oh. when people authenticate via tokens, the time to find, you know, find your dongle or to yeah. use your fingerprint or whatever also probably dominates. So. Um, can you, given that observation, um, how much does ha like half a second of processing time matter? Uh, yeah, so uh, the first, uh, in the yellow bar chart you can see the first one, uh, the smallest one is the time to create the challenge. Uh, the middle one would be time to verify and unlock the challenge, which is roughly around 300. And the total time for authentication is 500 milliseconds. So the time to create the challenge and the time to verify and unlock it is combined to be 500 seconds. Each one is quite less. But here we have uh, used uh, different types of, you know, MDS, uh, SHA-1, SHA-256. These are different kind of cryptographic systems they've used. So the average time for each entire performance is roughly around 1,100. Yeah. Okay, let me try to... It, let me ask it a different way. Okay, okay so um, if you're going to sit down at your laptop yeah. and do some work, 
yeah. in Starbucks, right? Right. Um, if you are able to unlock your laptop by your fingerprint, yeah. you reach your finger over and put it on the fingerprint reader yeah. and it unlocks. Yeah. And that might take half a second or right. something. If you have to type in a password, yeah. if you have a long, strong password, the amount of time it takes you to actually type that password is going to be very long. True. Right. So if the processing time of checking your fingerprint or hashing your password yeah. is a second or so, yeah. then isn't the time to type the password or use your token or do other things like that, doesn't that just dominate this time anyway? Um, is, isn't that time so much bigger than the computational time that, that the computational time doesn't really matter that much? Um, it was mostly a performance benchmarking, uh, uh, basically the time taken. So yeah, if we factor on those things, that might work. But uh, you know, on the user end with uh, these uh, JWD token and all these, they are also encrypted. So overall, it would be Fido would still be a little less. But yeah, it's the minuscule amount of time we are reducing and increasing the convenience of the user. Also, typing is you know a little too boring and people are lazy so they would rather tap the fingers than type the entire thing yeah yes thank you nice talk from my end as well um, do you have some experience to run Fido in offline environment? Because I know some countries now have the requirement for yeah. industrial applications to have a two-factor authentication, often, for instance, yeah. to log in an embedded Linux that with a weak internet connection. Do you have some experiences running that offline for such a purpose? Uh, yeah, this uh, exact project, this case study, I, uh, I'm still a college student. A university student so I try to implement this in my own university medical unit so uh, it was tested around 100 150 users so it worked and apart from that uh, it has huge uh, uses uh, use cases in financial services ex as well like recently recent not around 2021 or 2018 to 2019 visa has also tried to adopt this one uh, and other passwordless uh, or like passage IDs and these uh, uh, one password these are some of those companies which are adopting uh, these uh, technologies and uh, yeah uh, it has huge uh, applications in blockchain technology as well because in the blockchain scams don't occur but uh, uh, on the wallet end uh, it is very easy to do the uh, it is very easy to scam and fraud people to send the money so these kind of things uh, fido2 would you know stop against that Okay, yep, thanks. Any yes, others? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.